and welcome to the EMS Handoff Podcast. This is David, and along with my co-host, Eric McCullough and Bradley Dean, we are your source for all things EMS. So tonight, we've got another great guest this evening talking about uh, a phenomenal topic and something that we've talked about slightly here before, but really uh, is forefront and needs to be discussed as frequently as possible. So we're going to get onto that uh, pretty quickly tonight, but before we do, if you haven't already, uh, go to our YouTube site and find our last week's worth of work. Uh, this past week, we were at the Tennessee EMS Education Association Annual Conference in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and uh, got a chance to do some live podcasting. The first time this trio has been in the same room at the same time, and it was absolutely a ball. So let's go ahead and, and uh, go from the hometown boy over there. Eric McCullough, have you uh, been able to recover from the world uh, win of recording over the last couple of days? Oh, yeah. Um, and I didn't get to do as much as you guys because I was serving on the uh, Tim's board. So my duties were kind of bouncing around there. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I, I, for a minute, there, I thought that, again, there was no way that we all three could exist in the same time, in the same plane, in the same space. Because it seemed like every time... I would find you, Bradley would be gone, and then we would text, and Bradley, it's your turn, and <laughs> you'd be over there, and I'd be gone. Like, I don't, maybe we, maybe there is no Eric and Bradley. Maybe they don't exist differently, but we finally all three got together, had a good time recording. And, you know, none of us could beat Eric in his suspenders on the first day, you know, that sometimes you just got to bust that out. Uh, yeah, and then John Wood had the bow tie. I mean, hey, you do what you got to do, right? Oh, yeah. And then the other, the one that had to travel the most, let's get to. So uh, Bradley Dean, bringing the fam over, having a little good time in Middle Tennessee, and uh, got a chance to record a few different episodes with us. And uh, so, what'd you think? And it, it was great to be in Tennessee with everyone. Uh, it was a long drive out, long drive home, but it was a beautiful drive, uh, and I was able to spend some time with uh, with you guys. Thanks for. Uh, putting all that together it was an absolutely beautiful uh three days uh, uh i think we had just a little bit of rain on the the way back but uh, nothing really that bad so uh before we introduce our guests this evening let's uh always uh we like to recognize our podcast partner the journal of emergency medical services jim's been a tremendous partner to the ems handoff and while we serve as your source for all things the ems and the podcast verse Jim's has been an industry leader for many years. So make sure to go by and check out their website at gems.com. In addition to that, you can also check out our fellow podcasters as part of the EMS Today podcast. While we think we you should all be listening to us, whether it's on their uh, feed through Google, Spotify, or Apple, uh, you can also check out our fellow podcast hosts and, and give them a rate as well. So make sure to subscribe, rate, and review to the EMS Today podcast, so you can be the first to hear all of our stuff. And additionally, we would like to uh, direct you all over to the Pursue Company, who hosts the official line of EMS handoff merchandise. You can go there and find the uh, the mo- very popular guys. I, I was really kind of surprised just how popular our key back line was uh, this last week at the conference. Uh, really could have made a killing. We took some over there to give away, and everybody wanted to buy them. So. Uh, you can be one of the first to go buy them at thepursueco.com, and you'll find all of our original EMS handoff shirts, the red, which is uh, my absolute favorite, gray, blue, or the black, which uh, almost looks like a subdued uh, uh, blue on that black. We also have hoodies, long sleeve shirts there. Enough of all of that, Bradley Dean. It's time to get us started, so go ahead and introduce our guest. Uh, so tonight, joined by Lost David for emergency services, and he's been employed uh, about four years. Uh, he's been a credit for nearly 15 years. He his career in uh, Florida uh, in 2006, and he serves in multiple different capacities. But uh, one of the other things he does is he's one of our tactical medics for the county team as well as military PD. Um, and he was pledged to doing stuff for paramedic and EMT. Thank you for joining us. Bradley, thank you for having me. Eric, David, thank you also. 
Absolutely. And uh, so we, we're going to talk about this uh, and just to give everybody a heads up when they see this, obviously see the title, but we're going to put it right here. So why is personal mental health important for EMS professionals? Now, I know why for me, but we're going to give you uh, an opportunity to just kind of uh, kick us off here, Lonnie, why you think personal mental health is important for EMS professionals. Well, David, um, mental health is probably one of the biggest challenges that, that we face um, in EMS. Um, from the tough, you know, pediatric calls to, you know, just things that we see every day and, and learning how to deal with them. Um, some people deal better with them than, than others. Um, and in, in mental health in, in EMS is just, it's got to be on the forefront of, of our jobs. You know, our agencies need to be on board with it. Um, to get us the help that we need, you know, I'm, I'm that man's man and that, you know, I don't need nobody to talk to. And, you know, I went through that for years. Um, and I, you know, went through my EAP, um, and, and found a fighter, uh, cause I, I was at, I was at the end. I was, uh, you know, toes off the edge, you know, ready to just ready to quit fighting. Um, and then I found a, um, a therapist uh, who does EMDR, uh, eye movement, uh, desensitization, and repurposing, um, and it, it worked miracles for me. Um, and you know, I think that that everybody in EMS um, should have uh, access to that, um, but not all providers do that. There's very few, actually, in the uh, in the United States that, that actually still practice EMDR that's been around since the 1970s. Um, but it's a, it's a tool that we have access to through, uh, providers, um, through your EAP. Um, you know, but once you find that provider that works for you, you need to stick with it. Um, you know, there's, there's people out there, uh, your coworkers that you could talk to, you know, sometimes that works, sometimes that don't, you know, doing CID stuff like that, you know, it helps, but it, uh, we've, we've got to figure out a way to, to help our employees truly deal with the, the, the mental aspect of this job. Well, I guess, uh, you know, as long as we've been doing all of these Zooms, I, I got a new setup in my office this time. And so you would still think we would know how to take ourselves off mute. I'm going to take that little block out. Uh, so uh, you hit it right on the head there, Lonnie, that uh, uh, it is uh, mental health is one of those things that in years past, uh, you know, probably most of us growing up in this profession, I know when I first started, basically, if I needed help, I wasn't a good firefighter and I wasn't a good paramedic. Um, and that was a humongous issue. Uh, but before we really get into this, I do want to uh, pass this on as well, because this makes it hit home even more. So we want to reach out and give our thoughts and prayers to Palm Beach County, Florida, who is going through this uh, very thing right now. Um, and I don't care where you are. You know, we talk about it being a family and it really does, whether we know the individual or not, uh, it 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 bring stress to each and every one of us. But uh, Lonnie, we're going to go ahead and, and get directly into this. Mental health is one of those that is very difficult, especially in this profession. Many years back is basically thought as something that was only dealt with when we were talking about soldiers that were overseas in the military. Uh, and what we've really found out is that's simply not the case. Our EMS providers are tasked with trauma on a daily basis, whether it's, as you mentioned, a pediatric call that's gone awry, a, a trauma call that, you know, basically exposes you to much more than any individual should ever experience in their life. What do we... 
when, when we're talking mental health, let's start at an individual level. What is wrong with getting help? There, there's, there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting help. Um, it don't make you weak. Um, and, and me for years, you know, that was my thought process is, you know, I go to get help, you know, I, I'm, I'm weak, you know, uh, that, you know, it, it it's not going to help me. It's not going to do this. Um, you know, people will look down on me because, you know, I, I went to get help, you know, and I'm just, I'm not, I'm not strong enough to do it. And, you know, we make all these excuses for, for so long um, until it's, you know, unfortunately too late that we can't, you know, fight them battles anymore. Um, so I, I'm a huge advocate for uh, mental health. Um, as Bradley knows in, in my agency, I, I push for it, push for it, push for it all I can because I know how important it is. And, and as being someone who's been through it, um, I, I know that it can help. Um, give you a little, little backstory on myself if I'm allowed. You know, my, my grandfather was murdered um, when I was in paramedic school. Um, so, you know, that, that really uh, it beat me up for a long time. And then I got into EMS and got into the paramedic side of it. And, you know, you run them, them traumatic calls with, you know, pediatrics. And, you know, I've, I've run calls on a, a couple of my friends um, that, that died, um, you know, when they, they sit in the back of your head and we think we bury them, but we truly don't. Um, you know, they, they never really go away until you can figure out a way um, to, to reprocess those thoughts. And that's where EMDR came in uh, with me um, and it, it helped me immensely. So that's, that's a, that is a point that I want to get to, but I'm going to kind of uh, start back just a little bit. So when we're talking about those individuals and that mental health, the first aspect is kind of developing a core people around you that you can talk to openly, freely, without any hesitation, right? You, you need that core group of, colleagues and this isn't the ones who just kind of tell you to buck up and keep going this is hey i, I call you and and no matter what time you're going to pick up the phone you got to have those colleagues right absolutely you know that's 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 the, the 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 foundation for it all is is you know having people that you can count on to to pick up the call you know that you know people who aren't ems don't really don't really get us so you have to have that EMS family that'll that'll be there for you that you can tell anything to to help the process get moving. So yes, you definitely need that foundation of people around you that that, that can give you some support without you know telling you, you know suck it up you know you're going to be all right you know you'll 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 get over it and need people that really don't do that. So the next part uh, to that is if you are responsible for people uh, or if you are that peer, uh, know what resources are available too, right? Within your organization, you know, most places you've already kind of referred to it, uh, the EAP, the employee assistance programs are, are there. Uh, and one of the key things is to know that it's not a shame to go there. They're not going to turn around and, and tell uh, Lonnie, hey, Lonnie, guess what? David came and talked to us uh, today, and he's got some problems, and you may want to talk to him kind of thing. It's That's within the organization, uh, but it's something that's there. So as a friend, uh, it is it is good to know that, hey, there's some, because while sometimes our phone call may be a good enough thing, it may be, hey, we need to get you to the next step. Absolutely. You know, um, as a lieutenant, you know, I, I, I see the calls that some of my people run um, and I try to reach out to them because I know that, you know, there's the difficult calls and the EAP, you know, I, I don't think it's utilized as much as it should be. Um, does everybody know about it? They, they say they do, but they truly do. They truly know what it does. You know, they can't, you know, it's, it's confidential, 
you know, they're, they're not going to make fun of you. You know, they'll, they're going to find you a provider that will work for you and, and, and what your needs are um, in the, in the mental aspect of this. Well, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because they, they get you tied. So that organization, whoever your entity uh, uh, relies on, and, and I, I don't know about you, but most of the places that I am, that that's one of the things that they hand over. Oh, by the way, you know, here's where you go for this. Here's where you go for this. Here's where you go for EAP. And, and you never kind of hear about it again. So uh, they also have typically have resources for other stuff other than mental health. And it's the stuff that usually causes issues with mental health. So one of the things that we see a lot of people have issues with is finances in this profession or something like that. And those uh, organizations tend to tie with that as well. Now, in another direction, still staying with that individual, know that there are additional resources. And this is where I kind of get into that EMDR with you as well. A lot of times with EAPs, you, you'll get that counselor that you can talk to, but there's additional counselors that are out there that may have additional resources. So don't necessarily think, and most of the time they are covered by the insurance programs that are uh, provided by the agencies. And, and sometimes your EAP will even refer you if you need additional assistance. So this is the next step going into those, uh, finding those counselors or, or psychologists or psychiatrists that may have access to the EMDR. Yeah, I mean, the, it, I, I got extremely lucky uh, here in, in, in my county um, that there's a there's one here that, that does EMDR. Uh, I was very skeptical at first, um, thinking, you know, is this really going to work? And, and I know that that's what a lot of people go in thinking. Uh, but let me back up for a second, Dave, because you really did hit the nail on the head when you said that EAP and like new employee uh, orientation and stuff like that is, is not talked about enough. You know, it's like, okay, you know, if you need marriage counseling or if you need this, that, here's your EAP, here's a number, call them to help you out. You know, I think that, that every agency for their new employees in their orientation, that needs to be something that's gone over thoroughly, not just like, well, here's a phone number you can call if you need some help. You know, they need to explain that, you know, it, it has a mental aspect of it. You know, if you're, your, your finances, you, you need marriage counseling, you know, there's so many things that, that they can provide that can, in the, in the grand scheme of things, help with the mental health part of this, of this job. Um, so it's, it's, it's an underutilized, uh, under talked about, uh, piece of uh our job that we that we have that needs to be put and, out there more and Lonnie let me let me uh make this a point it's a service that is already paid for whether you use them or not a absolutely and, and that's that's probably to me one of the biggest things that that causes me uh on the education side we we talk about some other resources and, and part of it in the counseling environment I'm like you know, we're paying these entities to provide this service to you all. And so if you aren't using them, they're going to sit there and get paid. And so our goal is to, hey, let's put them to work for you. I, you know, that's why this provided. Let's put them to work for you. And that's going to help you. And by helping you, it helps us as well. Absolutely. Uh, like the the uh, counselor that, that I went to, Initially, she wasn't in our, our, our EAP uh, program. However, she is now, I believe. If, you know, uh, Bradley can correct me on that. If, but she's, she's part of our EAP now. Um, and she's been, uh, uh, she's, a, she's a supporter of us. She's all about EMS and firefighters and, you know, our law enforcement. She is, she's all about it and she's all about helping us. She's come to to some of, some of our con eds, you know, on her dime, you know, she, she did them for, for, for free. So that, that just tells you the counselors that are out there that are actually willing to help you um, and want to help you, not just to say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you and just collect my money. You know, we, we pay a, a copay to go to the doctor 
because we got a, a, a hurt ankle or, or something, you know, I, I think that copay to be able to help you mentally is even more important than paying that copay to go for a regular checkup because we need mental health checkups as well. Well, and I think you make a really good point there. Uh, you know, they talk about every after age 40 males go in to start the process of being screened for prostate cancers because, you know, we we know that an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure if you want to use the cliche uh, type terms. But, you know, we, we feel a little bit bad. So we go to the doctor. Um, why is it that when it comes to mental health, uh, we, we don't do the same thing or we're not willing to do the same things. And, and I think a lot of times, especially in this profession where we're a lot of very alpha type individuals that like to be in charge, don't like to show a weakness, uh, find it that that would be a weakness. But to me, it's one of those things that uh, really the lack of getting that help is the weakness. You know, we would much rather see you get help, see you come to the job every day, uh, you, you may not be a perfect clear head, uh, but, uh, you know, you're, you're on the right path and you know what to think, what to take, what to do, when. Um, so I'm going to change just a little bit uh, and you can you can utilize this as you, uh, as as the experiences you've held uh, before, as you talked about getting to where you were or even your role now as a lieutenant and then definitely Bradley as his role. So we've got to take a look at this institutionally as well. Um, and I think uh, us as, as EMS leaders, we've got to look at things just slightly different and we have to start to know our people, whether it's your partner on the truck, whether it's your leadership, your line level leadership, lieutenants, captains, your, or your chiefs and say, Hey, uh, you know, Lonnie, you're not yourself today. What's going on, man? Because we all know that at some point in time, you know, it's, like I'm here in body and that's absolutely it. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I lived like that for years. I was, I was here in body and, you know, I, I make a concerted effort uh, for the people on my team that run a, a, a traumatic call, uh, a tough call as we, we also like to call them um, to, to check in on them, to, you know, hey, you know, I, I don't try to pull it up. Um, it, it's my responsibility to let them know, hey, if you need somebody to talk to, I don't care what time of night it is, uh, you you pick up the phone and call me. Uh, I'm here, you know, and and I'll do everything I can to 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 help, you know, my team and and make sure that they they get through those calls because. You know, I always thought, well, I can do it on my own. I can do it on my own. I can do it on my own. And it gets to the point where you can't do it on your own. And, you know, I was never one to really to, to really talk about them. Um, that was the, the tough part for me because, like you said, we're a lot of alphas, uh, you know, alpha males for the for the male people. Um, and it's it's tough for us, especially the older generation, to, to talk about it. And due to the fear of, you know, making it feel like we're weak. Um, so I, I do all I can to, to reach out to, to my team uh, to make sure after a tough call like that, that they know they have some support and, and we'll get them in a direction that they need to be to make sure that, that they get the help they, they truly, truly need. So I'm going to flip this over to Bradley for just a second, uh, because in my understanding, you guys are uh, at the same service. So this will uh, help out here. So Bradley is Rowan County staffed 100 percent all of the time. No, um, it, it would be okay. nice to be able to say yes, but no. I, I don't think, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, if you've had any conversation, any number of conversations on your travels, like I do on mine, it's not something that's inherent to North Carolina. It's not to Tennessee. It's everywhere right now. So I, the reason why I asked that question is what what's going to hit, happen next or my next question. So you have somebody uh, or a crew that has been dispatched to an absolutely horrific call. All right. You, you've mentioned Lonnie, you do your best to follow up right after. 
Is there any discussion now about saying, hey, you know, Lonnie and Eric just came back from, and we can insert any number of things, a, a shooting, a stabbing, a car wreck, a pediatric, you know, whatever that bad call is, and saying, hey, these guys have run like three calls back to back, and they have just absolutely aided on this last call. You're out of the system for the next half an hour. Is that, is that, how are you all handling that? Is that something allow them to decompress, allow them to shut down for just a few minutes? And would that help? So, uh, I, not to put Lonnie on the spot, but I'll jump in here. Can that be done? The answer is yes. What happens when that gets done is another issue uh, because most of the time when something like that happens, you know, our system status is already busy, everything else. So that it, it would take a manual process to somehow up staff, get a franchise agency in to, to, you know, take some of that load. So a unit or a crew could be able to do that. And, and that would actually depend on whoever is riding the seat as the shift commander to, to make that determination, make that decision to say, hey, medic, whatever, you're going to be out for the next 30 minutes. We're going to have somebody else covering your your area. Uh, is that in discussions? Is that something on the operation side? And this is I, I'm asking this question, honestly, uh, because it's something that I've heard. But on the education side, obviously, I, I don't get to employ uh, quite the same. But uh, is that is that being discussed? I, I can tell you some some of our uh, officers that ride the shift commander seat have done that. Uh, will do Good. that. Uh, I don't know that all of them do. All right. So with that, one of the key things that I've heard is, or a, a I shouldn't say key things I've heard, a comment that I've heard. Um, is this, we, we actually had an individual, um, that basically said, uh, he went to a supervisor to say, Hey, I need help. Um, how do you handle some of this? And th this individual was a new grad, uh, had been out and it seemed like every bad call went to this individual. And basically he said, suck it up and get back on the truck. And that's, you know, one of those things that we obviously need to get uh, get away from. But let's let's flip this and say, Lonnie, looking at you as a lieutenant, how do you take that strength again, growing up in an environment where you're told that you just need to suck it up and get back to it? How do you turn those conversations and say, hey, I honestly know how you feel. There's ways that we can get you help. Let's do that. And, and, and David, that's, that's what needs to be done. Um, if, a, if your supervisor tells that to you, um, in my opinion, they have failed as a supervisor. Um, in, in, this, in this business, you and the stuff that we see and the stuff that we have to do, um, that, that's not a, an acceptable response. You know, that's, that's going to cause them to shut down um, and, and or possibly shut down and, and not seek the help uh, that they truly need. As you know, if your supervisor tells you, hey, well, just suck it up and, and get back to work, you, you, you failed as a supervisor. Uh, and, and in my opinion, you failed as a human being um, because that's, that, that should not be how we, we deal with our employees especially the ones that, that find the, the, the strength to come and say, Hey, I need help. Uh, cause that's literally one of the hardest things to do is to, to say, Hey, I need help. Um, so when, when somebody comes to you, uh, especially in EMS and says, Hey, you know, I, I need some help. Then I can promise you, I'm going to bend over backwards to do whatever I can to, to get that employee some help. Because it's, it's literally the, the, the hardest thing to do is to admit that we need help. And the, 
Other thing, and this may be pointed a little bit more towards Bradley, uh, but uh, you know, a lot of times when we talk about this from an institutional or leadership standpoint, uh, you know, a lot of things like a, uh, a broken ankle, a torn bicep, a back injury, all has basically a cost value to it. You know, a, a broken ankle is going to require surgery. It's going to require X number of weeks off. It's going to require some physical therapy. So we're going to go through workers comp and we know that we've lost Eric for the next six weeks or whatever that is. And so that's going to have X cost, you know, $30,000 uh, back injuries, probably the, the most uh, similar to this mental health. Um, but uh, because, you know, we know with back injuries, there's sometimes a singular back surgery will work. Sometimes just physical therapy will work. Sometimes it's multiple back surgeries and years out of the job. Mental health is one of those things, though, that when it comes to workers' comp, you don't know how long an individual is going to be out. And you don't know how long or how much it's going to take to recover. So, I, like I said, I'm going to point this to Bradley. The, the question should be fairly obvious, but is it? I almost feel bad even asking this question because I know, but is it worth the investment to put into somebody's mental health when you don't know how much that's going to cost? Absolutely. Um, we have no idea what puts somebody in a frame of mind to do something, um, to go down a certain pathway. But our human capital, our employees, yeah, re regardless of where they are in their, in their stage um, uh, of life or their profession, it is worth making sure that they are a fit individual and a fit employee because the citizens and visitors of, of wherever we work deserve the best care that they can get. And the only way it, that we can deliver that is to have healthy employees and that's healthy physically and healthy mentally. Seeing a mental health provider uh, and or taking you know medication for anxiety or anything else is no different than seeing a, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, or taking um, an ACE inhibitor for, for hypertension. Uh, it's just as important. So let's get outside of our, our profession in itself right now. We're going to keep with the EMS uh, theme, but uh, I know that uh, there are many different organizations that you can get involved in with as well, uh, built around these mental health aspects. So there's still, you know, as, as we've talked about with Lonnie, you know, the, the individual colleagues, the EAP, the counselors outside, there's group sessions, but there's also different organizations such as, in our area, we have one, and I know it's uh, taking off. It was at the TEMSA conference as well. We have one that's called Reboot Recovery. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's also different entities, and this would be good for our leaderships. Uh, again, whether it's uh, the shift commanders, your lieutenants, captains, uh, or division chiefs, depending on what you have. to, You know, there's different organizations you can get involved with, and many of them, as some of them are worried about, are without a cost. So these group settings as well bring that mental stability, even when you're not having a crisis. So Lonnie, do you all have any of these uh, over in your area as well? Uh, David, to be honest, I, I, I don't know right off the, the top of my head. Um, I know at the, the Rowan Helping Ministries here, uh, they, my, my my counselor that that I dealt with, she deals a lot with uh, the the veterans, the the homeless veterans in our area. Um, but I think it's pretty much open to anyone because you know it's discussing the the PTSD and, and the mental aspect of you know what they go through. Also, um, I, I haven't heard of anything you know like you have the reboot recovery, um, but there's you know. She does it at the, at the Rowan Help of Ministries uh, to help them guys. So I was just looking at 
this real quick, just because that's what you do when you have a device up here. And there's there's actually a couple of piers down around Salisbury, Concord, Statesville. So there's a few in the area for that specifically yeah. uh, as well. But uh, so that's definitely something that uh, we would uh, like to to you know encourage and, and find out because. While it may be an organization like Reboot Recovery, it may be another entity as well. Like you said, a lot of uh, religious institutions have uh, different sessions that you can attend. Uh, you know, the community has community events, and it may not be something uh, like that as well. It may just be getting involved with the community, going to join a bowling league or something like that. You know, a lot of a lot of fun. You know, in, in conversation and stuff. I was just trying to find what aspects are. Um, available. So Lonnie, I'm going to give you just a, a few minutes. Um, you know, what are some indicators that people should look at if they are starting to wonder about their mental health itself? So going to that individual, going to the incidents themselves. Well, I mean, you know, you get those people that, that, uh, you know, they're constantly upbeat, you know, they're constantly smiling and then they run that call and then all of a sudden they're just a, like we said earlier, you know, they're, they're there in body, you know, and, and you look for changes in these people in, in their, in their personality, uh, the way they act. I mean, e even down to their, their eating habits, you know, if you, if you spend a lot of time, you know, cause we spend 12 hours with an individual, um, and you get to know these people, you, you get to know their, their, their personality, you know, how they act. Um, so any, anything that, that is not the norm for them, you know, in a sudden change after they've run a, a, a bad call, uh, you look for even the subtlest of signs that, that can tell you, Hey, something's not right. Something's not right with my, my, my friend, my partner, you know, my coworker and it, it's, it's pretty obvious to, you know, to me. Um, but w when you know your people and, and you see that they've changed and even the, the, the smallest amount, to me, that's an indicator that, you know, that they're, that they're struggling a little bit, you know, and, and I think a lot of the things that I, I think I meant to say this earlier is, you know, we don't look for help either because they're like, oh, well, they're just going to put me on a bunch of pills and I'm just going to be a zombie. And I, I think that's a, a big drawback also of, of how they think. Um, me, I chose not to do uh, anything medicinally. Um, I chose the EMDR um, w without any medicine and, and it, it worked for me. You know, some people, you know, they may have to take some kind of antidepressant or something like that to help them, but it's not, that's not always the case, David. So you, you touched on where I was going next as, as a, as a partner, as a supervisor, there are certain clues that you can cue into that may be very subtle that if you're not paying attention to them, they're going to, you know, be missed and, and an opportunity is missed as well. So, uh, conversation when something like that happens that can be simply the first is just being willing or comfortable and I, you know, I find this very interesting that for a group of individuals that are trained to go out and talk to strangers at a moment's notice to extract out as much detail as we can to find out what's going on when it happens within our own vehicle or in our own station we're afraid to say hey is there something going on well, I mean, but you can't be, um, you know, am I going to go in there and be like, Hey, tell me about your call. No, I'm, I'm not, you know, maybe they don't want to, I, I let them bring that aspect of it up. If they want to talk about it, uh, that's one thing, but you know, my job as, as a Lieutenant is to make sure they're okay. Um, do all I can to, to, to let them know, Hey, you know what? You can talk to me. You know, if you want to talk about the call, great. If you don't, I get it. I understand, you know, but just know that, that I am here for you. And there's, there's many people around here that, that you can talk to, but you have to make that effort. You, 
for that individual, you know, not just kind of be like, Hey, you good? Oh yeah, I'm fine. You know, but we, we see them subtle differences in them and, and know that they're not. And we just have to reassure them that, you know, we're here for them. And, and me personally, I, I will do whatever I can to, to get them the help they need, whether it's just a, a, a shoulder to cry on or, you know, be a, a whipping post for a few minutes. I, I got tough skin. So, you know, but I'm, I'm willing to, to go that extra mile to, to make sure that people get the help they need. And again, it's uh, one of those situations that don't be afraid, ask the question, explore. And this is one of the things I also tell some of our students, you know, I had this conversation at the very beginning, very similar to what we've already discussed. I'm like, at some point in time, one of you is going to have that call on a clinical rotation. And if you're afraid to ask them or ha engage in that conversation, then don't feel, don't hesitate to reach out. So I, you know, I'm, I'm the partner, Eric and I are out. It's like, Hey, Hey Lonnie, uh, you know, Eric is just not himself and I'm not sure. And I can't really get to anything. Can you come down and talk to him? So make sure and reach out and, and use that, um, use that period to engage somebody to make sure that we, we identify. Right. Right. You know, and if, if they're not comfortable talking to me, you know, as we all know, there, there are clicks in, in, in EMS um, and, and go to, to the, the people that are closest to them, you know, cause they may not even feel like talking to them. So reach out to, to someone who's a little closer to them cause they don't, you know, not everybody knows me personally um, and may not feel comfortable talking to me, but I'm, I, I will still ask the question, you know, are, are you good? You know, if there's anything I can do to help you, you know, if you need to talk, I'm here, or we just need to reach out to the people that are closest to them to, to try to get them to maybe open up to them a little bit, you know, because that starts the process, but we can't be afraid to, to start that conversation no matter who we are or who they are, whether you've got differences or, or in differences, you know, we, we still have to make that effort. Well, Lonnie, we certainly appreciate you taking uh, the, the last 50 minutes of your time. We're going to give you a couple minutes just to kind of wrap up. Tell us your message uh, and, uh, you know, any last thoughts you, you want to convey to whether the, it's the individual whether it's that line level supervisor that's out with them on a daily basis or even administration, what they should know about this topic. Well, to me, this, this, this topic is one of the, the, the biggest things for me. Um, I'm very passionate about it um, because I was that person that was afraid to ask for help. Um, and now I'm not. I, I will, if I get to that point, I will, I will ask for help. You know, I will use my EAP and, and everybody out there should be using the resources that we have to, to help the, the mental aspect of this job. Um, I, I know that it's, it's tough to do um, and we don't always want to do it, but if you can, if you can muster the strength to say, Hey, you know, I need help. Um, then there's, there's plenty of resources and plenty of people uh, out there uh, that, that are willing to help you. And, and one of the biggest things for me that somebody told me one time, and it, it's gotten pretty big, is it's okay to not be okay. You know, but we, we have the resources and, and, and people that are, are, are willing, you know, it, it could be a perfect stranger that, that you do a kind gesture to that can make a huge difference in somebody's lives. You know, we got to get back to being to, to being human beings, and 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 look out for one another, and and take care of each other. Uh, so if if you if you feel like you need help, uh, only you can reach out to 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 people. You know, we'll we'll check on you, we'll do what we can to help you, um, but but you you've got to find that strength to say, hey, you know what, I, I need the help, and and we're going to help you. Well, I, I've seen uh, this, you know, I've heard that comment uh, many times, uh, and I think it should be regularly said, you know, it, it's okay to not be okay. 
uh, and together we're going to be okay. So Bradley, go ahead and wrap up with your last thoughts tonight. So, you know, one of the things I would say is make sure um, that, that you take care of yourself because receiving mental health treatment does not mean that, that something's wrong with you. Um, if you think that uh, someone that you work with or uh, is, is suffering with some mental health issues, some, uh, issues with calls, the biggest thing I would say is if you see something, say something. There are multiple ways to approach an individual and assist a coworker in getting help, but you have to take that first step sometimes because if you don't, nobody else will. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Bradley. And any last thoughts from you, Eric? Oh, no, I've just been sitting here uh, listening to it. Um, I think the other thing, my takeaway was, instead of it being reactive, which a lot of mental health is, uh, being proactive before, you know, developing healthy habits, exercising, uh, taking the time off and being away from work and actually not, you know, not being engaged in work activities probably helps a lot too, in addition to some of the reactive components for mental health. But no, yeah, it's been a good, good, uh, uh, good discussion tonight. And in, in my last thoughts, it's one of those things that we've got to kind of take a look to at uh, how long we allow somebody to work, because one of the big things that we see is uh, that badge of honor that I worked 24, 48, 72, 96 hours in a row. Um, I did five days at one point in time in between semesters of the paramedic program. And I'll have to tell you that there was no uh, development of mental health stability during those five days, especially. Um, and, you know, now with uh, calls happening even more frequently, uh, take a look at your crews and, and check in with them, especially if they're working multiple shifts, multiple places. That, that, is, that is going to be something that is huge. Lonnie, I just want to reach out and say thank you very much for this topic. A lot of people want to shy away from it. And uh, uh, you have a story that uh, is, is great. You can tell from the first hand. And uh, hopefully affect any number of people that are out there. Uh, so leave this with everybody today that if you have something that's going on, reach out to somebody and it can be any one of us, uh, you know, at the end of all of our episodes, we always tell you how to get a hold of us uh, through our different uh, resources. Uh, send us a message and we'll even talk to you uh, because that's uh, something that's big for all of us. So um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up again. Lonnie, thank you very much. For all of our listeners out here, if you were to go to our EMS handoff page on the website today, Eric, what would they see? Working on it. It's right. Well, hopefully, I don't know. By the time this is out, this might actually be published, but um, I'm redoing the whole thing so it makes it a lot easier to see stuff and it pops up on all your media a lot easier. But all Facebook right. is where it's at right now. Facebook and YouTube. Facebook and YouTube. So if you go to our EMS handoff page, Bradley is in our first redesign since all of this uh, started, as he said, to kind of give you, because we've been doing, we're doing live events now. We've got already one more on the books and uh, Bradley's working on another. I'm working on another. So we'll have to see, you know, everything that's going on. Make sure to get in touch with our Facebook page, our Facebook group at EMS Handoff, and also go to our YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review there as well so you can get uh, all of our newest episodes there every Wednesday at noon. So always take a look at those and always push out one last time. Make sure to go by the Pursue Company and get our shirts. Uh, they not only support us, but they also support an organization called Love 146. It uh, works to stop uh, human trafficking, especially child trafficking in the country. So not only do they help us, but they also make a donation to Love 146. So go to the Pursuit Company at thepursuitco.com and find all of our good EMS handoff gear. So for my co-host, Eric McCullough and Bradley Dean, not live this time, coming up again here in the future. Take care, stay safe, and always remember the value of your EMS handoff.